What a hurricane season it's been so far. I'm Mike Naso with the latest tropical video update on this Thursday evening. Stu Ostro, meteorologist, worked at the Weather Channel. He posted this on Twitter of our four big hurricanes, the four hurricanes that have hit America uh, this year. Hannah back in July, remember that? Corpus Christi, Isaias in North Carolina in early August. Laura, of course, the storm of the year thus far. And uh, now Sally, making landfall in Gulf Shores, Alabama as a high-end Category 2. Just a very devastating hurricane season so far. And again, we knew it was going to be busy, but you can never really tell until the storms get going if they're going to hit land. The hurricane name list started with Arthur back in May. We had Bertha. Crystal Ball we thought was going to be a hurricane, remember, in Louisiana. It was a tropical storm. Dolly and Edward were very weak, quick-named storms. Faye hit New England as a tropical storm. Gonzalo went through the windwards, thought it would be a hurricane. It didn't. We had Hurricane Hannah hit Texas. Isaias hit North Carolina. Josephine and Kyle were very weak storms. Then, of course, Laura was a high-end Category 4 in Louisiana. Marco was a hurricane, but it dissipated before it hit the Gulf Coast. Nana hit Belize as a hurricane. Omar moved out as a tropical storm. Paulette ravaged Bermuda as a hurricane. Renee never amounted to anything. Sally became a disastrous hurricane on the Gulf Coast. And we are now dealing with Major Hurricane Teddy, Tropical Storm Vicky, which is gone, and we only have one name left on the name list. What a remarkable hurricane season it has been. Taking a look out here, this is a very cool-looking uh, water vapor imagery. Check out those colors. Very uh, fall-like, Halloween-like, I almost uh, think. We have our three systems, what's left of Hurricane Sally moving offshore here. It's getting pushed out by this troughiness. What a disastrous storm it's been. This is a new tropical depression forecast to be another hurricane in the Gulf. As mentioned, it'll be Wilfred, the last name on the list. And this is our monstrous Category 4 Hurricane Teddy, which is roaring in the general direction of Bermuda and then eventually up and out. But Bermuda, Nova Scotia, maybe even Maine, you guys need to keep a close eye on it. We also have a tropical wave out here looking a bit more interesting as that moves on towards the west. So let's take a look at... Uh, the impact of Sally, we do have power outages, I wanted to note, in areas here. California has always got problems. But you can see Louisiana. This is not because of Sally. This is still because of Hurricane Laura. Our friends down there in Cameron Parish still without power there. To say nothing of now the northeast Gulf Coast, Alabama and the Florida Panhandle, the Alabama coastline there took a fierce battering. Baldwin County there where uh, Dauphin Island got impacted very badly, where the eye of the hurricane made landfall, to say nothing of the Panhandle, where Pensacola is here, Escambia and Santa Rosa counties, still without power. You can see the satellite there as Sally moves away. What a nasty hurricane, developing at random in the Bahamas and crossing South Florida, toying with us, thinking it's going to go to New Orleans, and then just hitting Gulf Shores. But you can see the heavy weather there off the coastline of North Carolina as Sally moves on out. You could just tell that the weather pattern is becoming more fall-like. You could tell we've got crisp air moving in and uh, definitely uh, more of a fall-like weather pattern. Here's our Tropical Depression 22. As of 10 p.m. Central, 11 p.m. Eastern, the hurricane hunters are flying out there. Winds of 35 is drifting northeast at 3. It is expected to drift northeast and then eventually, as a high builds in, push west and become a hurricane. And then kind of meander off the Texas coast. But again, it could be inland over Mexico. It could head up more close to Louisiana. It could be inland over Texas. Right now, somewhere in this general direction. But again, this is five days out, so we have a lot of time to watch it. But it has a lot of time to sit there over the Gulf and spin. The computer models are no better. The uh, European and GFS have it becoming a stronger hurricane. Some of the other models don't strengthen it. You can see anywhere in here, it's hard to even show a single line because they're all over the place. Uh, but the Hurricane Center is thinking something in that general direction. You can see right now there's not a whole lot on the satellite. It's looking rather uh, meager and as far as convection is concerned. You can see right there. So again... It is expected to move northeast over the next 24 hours, definitely being impacted by shear from that trough to the north, so it's not in an ideal environment, but that could be changing. Here's the uh, water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, and notice 
the cool wake here as uh, we have Hurricane Sally come up. It did cool down the waters as it spun around the Gulf. Our system here in the Northwest Gulf will have hot water to contend with. So again, very favorable uh, as far as water temperatures are concerned for development. The general thinking from the Hurricane Center is that this troughiness moving on through, as uh, you can see Sally pushing out here, this troughiness is going to be able to tug on our system off to the northeast. But then as that weakens, our system is going to get left behind, and high pressure is going to build back in and generally push our system to the west in the direction of Texas and also give it a little bit better environment to become a hurricane. However, it doesn't look like it's going to build in enough to push the system straight in, and that's why it could have weak steering currents like Sally had off of Alabama and kind of meander here. So again, we just don't know. There is a lot of uncertainty. You can see uh, it is expected to strengthen to a tropical storm and possibly a hurricane while moving very slowly the next few days. And while it is too early to determine what areas to see impacts of wind, surge, and rain, uh, interest in the western Gulf should monitor the progress of this system. And again, we could have tropical storm force winds as early as this weekend on the Texas or even Louisiana coastline here, to say nothing of Mexico. So you guys got to watch it carefully. Teddy, Hurricane Teddy, as of 11 p.m., a Category 4 hurricane, 140 miles per hour. It's at 20.9 north, 54.7 west. It's moving northwest at 12, forecast to remain a very dangerous hurricane and get very close to Bermuda and then eventually pull on to the north. Now this track's a little freaky here for uh, Nova Scotia by next Tuesday because it does appear that Hurricane Teddy may eventually bend a little northwest as it interacts with a low pressure area up here to the north. So again, if you're along the coastline of New England, keep an eye, but especially the Canadian Maritimes, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland with the impacts to say nothing of Bermuda here as Teddy approaches. Here's the infrared satellite imagery. What a hurricane. Hurricane Teddy, a very powerful hurricane, a very proud hurricane. You can see the well-defined eye there. There are the uh, northern U.S. Virgin Islands. You guys, knock on wood, you've had to put up with some stuff like early Laura and all that, but you haven't had anything like what you had in 2017 with Irma and Maria and whatnot. There's Puerto Rico on the edge. You can see the hurricane moving the pattern here. You can see the cloud shield. That's the direction the upper level winds want to take it, which is straight off towards the west-northwest and to the northwest. Check out the water temperatures here near Bermuda. Watch how they cool as Hurricane Paulette leaves a little bit of a cool tongue right in there. Watch that blue kind of show up. So Teddy's going to have to contend with some slightly cooler waters, but it's enough to keep it a dangerous hurricane as it pulls towards the north. So again, right now it is expected to approach Bermuda as a hurricane this weekend and make its closest approach Sunday and Monday. And we don't know yet the exact track and intensity, but nevertheless, the risk of strong winds, surge, and heavy rainfall for Bermuda is on the rise. Number two, large swells. Teddy is going to produce some good-looking swells all the way from the Lesser Antilles all the way through the East Coast, and that could cause high waves, high surf, life-threatening rip currents. So again, we're going to watch all these systems very carefully. Our system in the Gulf of Mexico forecast to be a hurricane named Wilfred. Our uh, Sally leaving the East Coast there, and our very dangerous Category 4 Hurricane Teddy. Look at the outflow of Teddy venting right into this upper level low like an exhaust pipe. That is a sign of a very powerful hurricane. And again, more systems off Africa that could be more storms. If we run out of names after Wilfred, we're going to move on to Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, and the whole Greek alphabet. So I'm Mike Nasal with the latest on the tropics. Stay tuned as we continue to watch a very active hurricane season 2020.